Okay, folks, you're the Shadow Channel. Blah, 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 blah. Sorry, I do that sometimes. It's mm. like the, the tongue thing. Blah, 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 blah. That's actually a thing I do. Uh, you're listening to a Shadow Channel podcast. My name is Lewis. And today, today, um, on this most auspicious of days, I've got a habit of saying auspicious. Um, you know, did you ever go through that thing, Mike? Mike is on the show, by the way, folks. Hello. Uh, you're listening. This is filler, but you've probably been able to discern that it's filler based on the description, the thumbnail, whatever it is. That, well, however it looks on the other side of the sausage conveyor belt. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing I'm doing very well, Lewis. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me on. This is, uh, God, this will be, what, between Impulse Magazine and this, this will be, what, the fourth thing that we've uh, that we've worked on? I think so. Third or fourth. Yeah. Because there was the, um, there was the two Impulse, uh, Two impulse projects it was the the inspiring youth video. Yeah, uh, there was the budget special podcast, and uh, and and there was a, a previous uh, rendition of filler, I believe. I yes, an unreleased support. rendition. Of unreleased. Filler. It was unreleased because um, it was, I think, the second thing or the first thing, maybe the second thing that I had ever done that involved uh, multi track okay. recording. And I, I, I made a mistake with the editing process. Basically, I balanced them out badly. And I made the mistake of deleting the original raw source files. Right. Which I've done once before, the whole time I've been doing this podcasting racket. Uh, and so that was unreleased. I do apologize oh, for that. That's, so that's, if we count problem. that and both of the... Yeah, the, this is the fourth. So, so this is technically my debut on Shadow Channel Podcast. Yes, yeah, it is actually your debut on the podcast. It would be. It's it's your first. I mean, this will almost definitely be released. I mean, it will be <laughs> almost definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be released, but I have to. I mean, I have to. Uh, you know, I don't want to. I I, I want to be as airtight as possible without being absolute right. about that assessment. Because <laughs> <laughs> you never know what stupid shit I'm going to accidentally do tomorrow. It's my favorite oxymoron. Is uh, is um, vaguely certain. I, I, use, certain, I, use, yeah. I use that term all the time. And it's yeah. brilliant. I love it. Yeah, almost definitely. Um, <laughs> yeah, I suppose, yeah, we do kind of, and I said that at the beginning, like, do you ever have um, words that you use and you get into the habit of using them? It's like a pet word for a week and it's your favorite word to use. For me, it was um, ostensibly. For about a week, I used the word ostensibly far too much. Yeah, uh, what was um, extemporaneous was one that I kept using. What uh, is the definition of extemporaneous? Extemporaneous, um, I believe it's it's things that are uh, unexpected but exciting, I think. I think. Uh, it's been a while since I used it, so I may have forgotten. Yeah. Uh, like, con- Uncle Toby, I didn't expect to see you here. <laughs> These are extemporaneous circumstances. <laughs> um, uh, convivial. As well was another word that mm. I that I that I enjoyed because uh, I think my dad put it up on his Facebook feed and I, it's, it's just if if I see a word that I don't know I have to I have to look it up and then I'll probably just use it yeah for a while after so what, that. what is the what is the definition of that particular word uh, convivial it's um it's 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 a friendly atmosphere right okay okay. Yeah, so like the house party last night. I mean, it was a lot of different kind of people, and I didn't know many of them, but it was it was very convivial. Yeah, it was very convivial. Um, I was getting my convivial. I, I was getting my conviviality on, which yeah. is probably not a word. That's <laughs> actually a phrase I use as, a lot as well. It's probably not a word, <laughs> but I use it in a context that seems to fit. But I get some like grammar Nazi. Did you ever watch like that Mitchell and Webb look? Yeah, yeah. Where yeah. they have the the, the, the skit or, or the sketch with the grammar Nazis and he's just shooting people in the head because they're fucking up. Word choice and other things. Grammatically incorrect, grammatically imperfect. Um So it's the summer. It it's is. like the twentieth today? It's the twentieth uh, of July. Yes. Um and the last time you were on the show was what, March? Uh I yeah, I think I think it would have been around March. It, it, that, that sounds about right. Mm. I noticed that you you have a very um, the audacity of your couch is you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's very loud. This would make a terrible sex couch. Actually, it'd make a great sex couch if you hated your neighbors. That that uh, the, I've, I've sorry to interrupt you. I've found I've, I've on my phone. I've I've cheapened out and and gotten my definition of uh, extemporaneous um, spur of the moment. Spur it's the, the word moment, for right. spur of the moment. Uh, 
<laughs> so <laughs> different from spontaneous then? I, I think so, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I believe so. We we do kinda we, we do a thing where we kinda duplicate words in the English language, you know? We'll have like five different ways to say the same thing. Uh, yeah, with yeah, different or, or, levels or different, of or different meanings or different meanings of exactly the same word. Yeah. B O W has you know to bow. You know if you nod your head and in, yeah. in, in a courteous way is bowing. Bow, bow and arrow, or bow of a ship. You know, yeah, <laughs> three exactly. Different, yeah, three different things for the and, exact. And same also, word. like it allows you to draw out um, what you're saying. You mm-hmm. know, could that like be the main secret of English literature, which in my opinion is literature uh, mm. for the most part. Uh, or at least has been for the last couple hundred years. I mean, I yeah, I mean, French, you have Voltaire and all that. Stuff. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't for a second. But when people think of literature, even people to whom the English is not their first language, you look well, back at for the Shakespeare's yeah, and the even Dickens even looking and... at the twentieth century with American comic books. So much of the cultural, you know, pop, pop culture stuff comes from things like comic books. Comes from ri- literature of of a sort that has been written in the English language, and one of the reasons for that among other things is the breadth of the English language in terms of its number of words and also being able to say things not only specifically or vaguely um, uh, uh, to be ambiguous about what you mean to say in other ter- in other words but also you can change the tone of what you say like a specific word used in conjunction with other specific words specific words can be read into mm. you know so there's almost this interpretation element to it you know yeah. uh, like the freaking bible uh, well, or something uh, like that something you, similar you mentioned comic books it's actually interesting to think that it's a very Americanized um, it's a very Americanized industry but the uh, probably the most noted comic book writer of all time uh, maybe not of all time but probably his work stands out as probably some of the most significant is uh, Alan Moore mm. who's uh, who's a Brit right. um, who pretty much mastered the medium mastered the American medium because I think the comic books are generally considered to be an American medium although of course we've had them in the UK yeah Beano uh, and shit like yeah, that yeah yeah uh, our, our comic books I mean I never read comic books when I was a kid so I mean I still read them yeah I still mean so take what I'm about to say with a pinch of salt because I really I mean it's conjecture I, I don't really have a full um feeling I, I, you know I haven't really got a full breadth of understanding with regard to comic books but I always felt like Beano was a little bit more gimmicky like the Beano those characters are not really held so close to the heart as the characters that you get in DC and Marvel comics oh, oh yeah yeah but they're they're entirely different in their in their subject matter yeah you know the, the Beano is um is very cheeky British humour you know like uh it, the the kind of the only fools and horses type yeah. oh let's get a a, a Cheeky, get rich quick scheme, or let's just get up to some mischief type thing. So that's that's very different from you know the um, the the American ideas of of, of, of superheroes and, um, and that that sense of uh, just wonderment to the yeah. impossible. I love the way that the Japanese interpreted comic books. You know, uh, where they would have they just went and, to the next you know, level like of transitioning from a comic book into a cartoon, which. I'd imagine was I mean if you look back at the, the history of animation probably one of the main motivators at the beginning of the 20th century to take comic books and make them into moving comic books you know what I mean uh, you know because if you look at early Mickey Mouse and shit like that it's the same kind of thing you know it's almost like slapstick in a way as well you know and and, and but also I mean it's I mean animation as a just a part of its nature seems to deal with the supernatural and not in the sense of like most haunted or some shit as in mm-hmm. you know you couldn't make a human being on screen do the things that you can make either a human being or, oh, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or a the, cartoon do in a cartoon there, you, are no, you, there are no limits yeah you can't hit a human being with a hammer in the head and have their heads turn into like a pancake shape and then morph back into a normal shape again <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know like getting hit with the acme anvil and all that's left are like the legs you know <laughs> like a splat yeah exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you can't do that with with real life or and if you could do that maybe capabilities have only now begun to present themselves but really you're using computer animation when you're doing a lot of that stuff anyway but, so it's one form of animation or another you know and it's immensely expensive where you could just draw a picture and make that you can you can turn the world into anything. You can bend any law that physics has ever presented to human beings by just drawing it differently. Uh huh. Well, uh, you know we're 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 kind of rolling on the topic of uh, of of animation things. So I've, I've come on to speak a little bit about uh, creativity. Mm. And since we uh, you know we started with the uh, with the comic book analogy, um, what is crazy to think of is that Superman has been around for 
and he's got to be coming up to about 80 years old. Uh, but his his original owners, you know, it's not like it's not like you and I can just re like bring up a Charles Dickens character. You know, we couldn't write uh, a a real sequel to Oliver Twist or something like that. But there have been hundreds of people who have wrote Superman. Right. And that's because the the owners uh, are the the two people who who came up with the uh, came up with the idea for Superman. That was uh, Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster. Um, the story goes that they went off to fight in the war. They enlisted, um, and but DC Comics <clears throat> bought the rights to the character so they could stay in print. Um, when they got back from the war, DC kept the rights, and it turned into this big uh, sprawling lawsuit between the two parties. But that kind of set the tone for um, for if you have a really good idea in comic books, um, it will then cease to be your idea and it will become Marvel's idea or it will become DC's idea so they can they can buy your idea well not you can buy they'll just take your idea because if you work for them it is their idea yeah you know that's that's the crazy thing is that you know you can you you can just have somebody else's idea like that yeah I mean strange. that's an interesting point especially I mean considering what you do and what you study I mean you you study journalism. I do, and so it's different from I suppose drawing a cartoon character. But I mean, th- uh, the uh, journalism can very quickly turn into just general writing. Oh so yeah, many, yeah, yeah, so many journalists well, are, are authors. Was a, uh, yeah. Dickens was uh, was a journalist, so yeah. was George Orwell. Thompson, exactly. Obviously, yeah, and... it presi- provides that really powerful um, literary discipline, or, or 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 at least writing. Yeah, discipline and writing. And so I'd imagine, based on what you've already learned, uh, that intellectual property is very important in journalism as well, which is basically what you're talking about with regards to Superman. Like, how, how, how does journalism... What is Where does um, intellectual property stand with regard to something like journalism? Um, I would think, probably if you're doing something like a documentary or things like that, I would say that, you know, because it's a film, because there's probably a studio behind it and things, the intellectual property on on that would be uh would would be an issue but in terms of in terms of you know just basic writing stories i don't think there's very much intellectual property on on that because it's just a process mm. um the it's just an established process in which to get out the word to in there's um it's the reverse pyramid scheme is is how we were taught it in the um there's the most important thing is the top line of the story of course and then it gets down with gradually less you know um less uh, I wouldn't say relevant information but things that the story can not necessarily you know wouldn't necessarily have to be in the story um so it I don't think there would be much of an intellectual property battle um in journalism because it's just a process I mean if you come up with a with a fantastically original idea like um for a documentary for instance I'm going to uh film about street children in Brazil in this area for this specific thing you know if you get it down to a specific enough issue and then somebody else tries to do the same thing maybe there's an intellectual property battle there but I'm not sure it's not it's not something that's that's widely discussed in it but I think it's because um, aside from being uh, somewhat creative I think journalism is also a trade mm, uh, right, in, a yeah, its, in a lot of its in a lot of its ways too but um it, what is weird is that I uh, a, a good friend of mine's is um, he he's he has his own film production company. It's called Holocene Productions, and you should probably check out the uh, the trailer for Around the World in Eighty Beers. Mm-hmm. And you find that on YouTube. You can you can mm-hmm. definitely find. Where it on would YouTube. you find the full film? Uh, it is not out for release yet. It's being pitched. Uh-huh. Uh, it's being pitched around at the moment, but you can definitely see the uh, the the full length trailer mm. with hopefully more updates coming soon on on, on how that's going. Um, but. And I'm I'm currently doing uh, he so he's he's a filmmaker and 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 I study um, journalism, uh, but our skill sets are quite parallel in, in in a lot of ways. You know, uh, camera work and editing and mm. and kind of structure and narrative. When it comes to writing, they're very different. You know, he has to write scripts and I have to write. Uh, well, I mean, we do write scripts, but it's a very different type of thing. <laughs> it's a totally different thing, right? It's like when you're writing a script because of the way it's segmented, it would be as if you were, you if you were writing a book or a, or an article. 
it was, it'd be like you were chopping everything you were seeing up into about five different pieces. Yeah, yeah. But and that sounds easy enough if you just identify and separate what needs to be chopped up. But you're actually writing it with the intent that it be written a specific way. So it's not a post production, I suppose, uh, kind of thing. Your your writing is saying, okay, the, so this is descriptive stuff, but you don't see this. Mm-hmm. This is non-descriptive stuff and you do in terms of people say it you know yeah. you do see that that does come to the surface directly someone says hi how are you doing whereas at the before you know before it could say you know he walked down the dark, yeah, yeah, you know stage, stage uh, yeah, exactly and uh, and also uh, you know you're 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 building you know it's easy to quote dialogue it, you know so like the, the judge asked the defendant blah 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 and you know this is ex newspaper whatever. exactly whereas exactly. if you're so actually it's... creating a conversation there's something quite unnatural which i think some people just get about writing a conversation that's coming straight from their head and yeah. making it sound like an organic real conversation which is why a bad scriptwriter can ruin a film oh, of course. so easily because you you, <laughs> um, you you destroy that suspension of disbelief because you're like people don't talk that way yeah that's why they use one liners but in you know in journalism it's different because it's just there's just one aim just to inform so, yeah. so a scripting is different but um, but yeah in terms of in terms of camera work and stuff I mean the process of filming and editing is, is, is pretty much the same in either you use the same the same equipment and the same editing things but with the um, uh, and and he does various little jobs as a, as a runner on certain sets and things um, and I'm currently doing my placement where I'm just filming things and editing them um, and I was thinking about this the other day but it's uh, I, I, I really respect how much more difficult it is to be in his position with a similar skill set because I think with what I do it's it's easier to open doors um, because because it's just a smaller it's a smaller scale in terms of filming and, and, and production obviously um, but just because there isn't really a huge amount of money involved comparatively yeah, yeah the threshold for entry is, is a lot lower yeah. in journalism because yeah. traditionally you only need that bit of paper and that pen but although I mean what do you how do you feel in terms of the industry you're going into because the industry you're going into is very similar to the industry that I am working towards going into um in the sense that it's I wouldn't say it's in a state of flux because flux really implies that it's you know it's floundering you know Mm. Uh, or not even that's floundering but it's just standing still or that it's wobbling a little um but it's in a state of mutation right now and and all industries I think almost all industries I mean I don't know how far cobblers have come in the last 30 years <laughs> probably you know not quite far but not massive you go in you don't see anything that looks particularly digital sure in a cobbler it's not, not in terms of the equipment used maybe yeah, I could be wrong I'm not a fucking cobbler uh, but you know most industries do move and mutate and change uh, constantly but at a much lower rate generally speaking although you could say the internet has accelerated almost all of them yeah yeah uh, the I, digital um, age has accelerated almost all of them but in terms of you know real mutation right now lend, uh, rapid mutation rapid is the word I was looking for journalism and the media in general if you want to look at the media as this overall all mediums and forms of communication are rapidly changing so the industry that you're going into and the industry that I want to go into are changing a lot so how do you feel about being a journalism student studying journalism as a trade as well as a, as an art form and as a pursuit and as a way of life I mean Hitchens famously said that it, you know it's not that being a writer is my job it's like I am a writer that's what I am it's 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 a purpose in life to some extent how do you feel about something like Vice where you see journalism becoming uh, you know coming a lot closer gr- rubbing shoulders with filmmaking so yeah. closely how do you feel about that um, I think I think what is what is kind of crazy about uh, journalism now is that everybody does everything. If you were to go back ten years, you know the Guardian. You know you can listen to a podcast on the Guardian now. You can watch videos on the Guardian's website and things mm. like that. Ten years ago, it was just a paper. Yeah. Now everybody does everything, and because everybody does everything, it means everybody who's in journalism has to do everything. Yeah. You can't just be a writer. You've got to have some degree of of tech knowledge um, and things like that. But when you have somebody that can Write that can produce videos that can produce podcasts, mm. and and uh, and knows how the press works. I think, I think that journalists themselves and the people that are learning it have now got such a broad skill set that 
journalism is not necessarily the only thing that they can do. I think that you can very easily go into marketing with mm. a journalism skill set now, advertising, PR. Yeah. Uh, I, so that's what I think is probably the um, is probably the craziest thing about how the internet has accelerated journalism so that journalists need to know how to do more. But in mm. that process, journalists can now do more beyond journalism. Um, well, maybe not beyond other than journalism. Yeah. I mean that's so, that's a great point. Yeah. So that's the that's the the craziest thing um, the, about about learning things now, uh, but it's 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 wild. Just uh, touching back on my on my friend here that uh, you know it's a similar skill set, but um, but because I'm in well because he's if he if he has a great idea, say he's he's on he's on a set as a runner and he's got a great idea and he pitches it to the right person who happens to be listening. They then may need to pitch that up 10 rungs of the ladder before it gets to somebody who eventually finalizes it. And I'm sure it gets changed maybe four or five times with each different pitch that is made. Um, so that that seems, that's like a, that must be a crazily stressful thing yeah, to get in order to do. Um, whereas with, with, I think with journalism, uh, I'm in a much easier state and this is why I, I really respect what he does um, because if I generally have an idea for a story um, I can probably just go out film it put it to somebody and they'll say eh, you know what maybe edit out this bit mm. or something like that but generally because it's all based on a very similar structure anyway you could probably get I could probably get something pretty good out of it with uh, uh, with, with what I thought it was um, but with a much more creative edge on that similar skill set. Um, it's 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 a corporate kind of the a, a corporate digestive track yeah. of, of what it was. You and have what to it be becomes. forced through the small intestines yeah, of the corporate yeah, yeah, yeah. monster. Yeah. So that's that's um, yeah. It's really interesting, you know, that you say that because you know I, I think I heard that somewhere before. It might have actually been you that said that in the modern age, it's perfectly true that 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 media outlets, whether it's a paper or television or whatever require a greater degree of versatility oh, from yeah. their employees and it's interesting because you were saying that you then go through this bureaucracy in order to get your work mm -hmm. out there simultaneously this has happened both because media has diversified and become more accessible mm -hmm. which means it's accessible to more people so if there's a, a billion people that have just been added actually this year it's going to hit three billion people connected to the internet Half, almost half the world's population would have been half a couple of years ago right. when we were still around six billion, um, which is amazing. I, I, I looked at the statistics. I think it was 1998 uh, or 1996. Do you know how many people were on the internet? How many? 14 million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 2014, three billion. Uh, yeah. Insane. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the greatest revolution probably in the history of the world. One of the greatest in the history of the world. Oh yeah. Since, yeah, since yeah. agriculture, since industrial. Well, I mean, um, it's, it's 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 I suppose a continuation of the. Of the Communication, yeah, revolution. The communication revolution right. and different, different subject, different time. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's interesting you say that they diversify uh, in order to meet that need because you've just added, you know, an extra billion if you're the Guardian because it's accessible all over the world now. Exactly. On the yeah, website, yeah. You've just added billions potentially of new potential, you know, consumers of you, whatever is it is you have. And you think it's interesting that in that attempt to diversify and jump along with the times, which is great. They've actually opened Pandora's box because you say that that digestive transit. The internet allows any one of those employees to take those skills that they've had to develop to be as diverse as possible, and use them in some cases as Vice have to take down the old media. Yeah, yeah, they've, yeah, they've, yeah. They've 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 given someone a hammer and nails for their own coffin potentially. Mm -hmm. and I don't dislike. I I have a different opinion on one outlet than another. You take CNN in America. CNN is dead. CNN's over. It's done. 400,000 so. continuous viewers. Um, uh, and that's their, their mean, you know, after they've worked out the averages high and low. And they are in every hotel room, every airport in the United States, more or less. Right. Access, low end of the dial, juicy spot on the, on the old TV dial. And they're being massacred, 400,000. And they're, they're a carcass on mm. life support. It's amazing to see so much action being hoovered up out with the mainstream media from the mainstream media and there's nothing they can do about it because they have to diversify in order to stay afloat and every day every day they diversify more and more they yeah they're sealing their own doom which is i it's one of those some men like to just like to watch the world burn 
things where you look at it and you go, I don't necessarily have a strong opinion on all of these outlets. Some of them I dislike, some of them I like. But it's amazing to watch that happen in real time before your eyes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and even then, uh, the the diversification of, of, you know, the media and how everything's kind of changing with the internet is harmful to the media in, in, in some regards. I mean, The Guardian, uh, are uh, they're, they're in a bit of financial trouble. Well, and maybe not anymore. Um, but monetizing your internet output your mm. internet content is difficult really difficult mm. um, where in the do you have like a, a newspaper app or any any app on your phone that's a newspaper one um, or like the Guardian app or, I, or something yeah like I that. think I have um, I think I have the Huffington Post right okay which ironically is an entirely well, online based okay, newspaper let's, let's well the, 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 that's 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 a good way to go yeah. for them to be honest but if you're if you have the Guardian app um, on your phone, would you still buy the Guardian newspaper? No. Well, that's that's no. exactly why. So you 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 already have that. Think news. about that in conjunction. Newspapers like print print journalism, as in printed on paper, yeah. not just print journalism. Yeah. Uh, in conjunction with the eco friendly times that we live in, it's that is just the recipe for disaster. Not only not only are more than watching it online, but less of them are going to buy it in paper because save the polar bears, man. You know? <laughs> which is uh, which is really interesting. Which is, I, I think the Sunday newspapers are probably would probably um, are probably still a great thing to go yeah. out and buy because it's, it's a more in depth coverage of everything that's in the week, and you're going to get you know different opinions from different great writers and things. So I still love buying the Sunday Herald. Yeah. Um, how, how much you, of that do you think is cultural collective habit, and how much of it do you think is still functional needs? You know, so I go out and buy it on Sunday because you buy the Sunday paper. What happens when the generation when you, that do that stop doing it? That's well, the, are we reaching this point where the floor is going to fall out? Um, I think so. I think that it's it's kind of an age thing, and I think that it's um, I think that there. Are, I don't think it's ever going to go away in local journalism. No, uh, no. Because I think they they'll they'll keep the you know the Edinburgh Evening News. I think will be in print for mm. for the massive foreseeable future. Um, but. I think it. I think it will be kind of a generational thing. I think that the the habit newspaper uh, buyers, and I may be outlandishly wrong if I say that, may be older than uh, than people in their twenties who would have mm. apps and things yeah. like that. Um, but I'll tell you, actually, the best one of the best examples uh, of 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 kind of tackling this problem is Private Eye. Mm. Uh, none of their content is online. Yeah. If you go onto their online uh, site, you'll find somewhere to I think to register to subscribe and maybe like a preview section mm. but it's all about selling you the physical yeah magazine. I like that. I mean private I have always been kind of mavericks yeah, yeah 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 but like the, the sad thing is is that you know it's not they're, they're not doing daily journalism yeah things. they don't have to print the news all the time they just have to be satirical exactly um, yeah but that's but that to me is a great way to to approach it um in that but they just shot themselves in the foot because the BBC beat everybody to the punch in yeah. terms of you know online. The, the BBC are anyway. good at doing that as well. The BBC are really quick off the mark with this kind of stuff. I mean, oh, they have assets. They, they have assets out the ass. Yeah, That's the, the the craziest thing about the BBC um, uh, Radio Four. It's um, it's you know if you're on the the radio for for any BBC channel and it's some historical art festival or something is going yeah. down somewhere uh, let's get Stephen Fry on the line because we're the BBC yeah like they can just do exactly. that and, and, uh, and they'll do it yeah, with anybody they would be I mean the, the kind of thing I mean if you're, if you're British as well that is it's sort of like the NHS you it doesn't matter what the BBC do I will proudly say that usually I will jump to the defence of the BBC Whenever I'm, I'm given the chance to, because it they, it goes so deep into your identity if you're British. Yeah, or well, usually. no, if you if you live, uh, you know, if you live within the cone or uh, under the umbrella of the BBC in terms of just the cultural zeitgeist, you know, it's just so synonymous with your identity because it's television and it's the radio when you were a little kid and it's yeah. you know, and uh, it, it, I'm not saying they could literally do anything. Definitely, these scandals with. Uh, 
Savile and all that kind of stuff the last couple of years have rocked them but I yeah. don't think that that will derail the BBC uh, uh, no I don't think so I think it'll always kind of uh, be around yeah um, it's, they were so quick off the mark with the online stuff yeah uh, I mean they had their I think they started the BBC News website in 2001 mm. I mean um, I remember seeing Fox News in America have a go at the BBC and I'm, I'm like you realise <laughs> you speak it as though you're equals you know if you're Fox Not News and they're the BBC the BBC have if you're Fox News and the BBC are an elephant, the BBC have a gnat yeah. on their leg. You know, it's absurd. Like, the idea, it doesn't matter how high your ratings are, artistically, uh, professionally, you know, journalistically, uh, however many m- m- mistakes the BBC may have made in the past, as all news outlets have, well, I mean, you, you just have nothing on them. Well, it's I mean, the, the, you know? I think Fox News is a product and, uh, and the BBC is, uh, is a service. Exactly. Like yeah, I, I agree one hundred percent. Yeah, that's exact. That's the perfect way to put. It, perfect way to put. It. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's 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 crazy to think, especially in um, especially in terms of, of of the news media and things. Now, um, I was I was thinking about this the other day. Um, when did the Titanic sink? Nineteen twelve. Nineteen twelve. Yeah, I think it was in February. Uh, how yeah. long do you think it took them to get that into the printed media from the exact moment that it happened? Mm. It probably didn't hit New York, which is the thing, the first place that obviously yeah, that's where the survivors all the, all the, came back to. Yeah, uh, and all the print media with yeah, outlets because would they be weren't anyway. far off the coast of Nova Scotia. Right, I think they were somewhere between Nova Scotia and, uh, and New England. Or I think it's New, is it New England that's the most northern state in the Americas if you look at it in terms of what latitude and longitude they go. Oh, right okay, up. yeah, yeah, it yeah. Kind of, it kind of. Um, it kind of yeah, it kind of bleeds over into what you would call what is it the sixty sixth parallel or is it the five hundredth parallel? I have no idea. You know, if you look at the, the border <laughs> between the United States and Canada, is basically straight. It's the only bit that juts out near where Montreal and stuff is. Sure, sure. It happens somewhere in the in in the North Atlantic, somewhere between Nova Scotia and there, and so it would have been New York, the East Coast, of the United States that kind of got the news out, and then it would have been probably then, trans- then it would Telegram. To- it would have been Telegram back across the Atlantic to London, right, uh, uh, and the, to the rest of Europe. So we can, um, can we safely say at least... 48 hours. Yeah, at least days. Two and a half days, yeah. At least days, right? Yeah. Now, with TMZ and these things that are on currently and the technology that we have now, if a D-list celebrity from Big Brother from five years ago um, walks yeah. out without wearing makeup, her photo is up on the internet and it's news within minutes, seconds. And the worst thing about it is you said that I don't have anyone in mind, but I have just this image of a woman in sweatpants with greasy peroxide blonde hair and blotches yep. everywhere and that's and, and walking out of and like that's a McDonald's at 5am yeah you know that's that's instant news now uh, Sally Light Sally which is the, will she strike again which is some shit like that part of the which is a big part of kind of the, the problem in, uh, in, in, in in news media today is when you have to um, feed the beast that is constant news um, what isn't news really becomes news yeah. Um, yeah and you know I think you find that sometimes on 24 hour news uh, programs I think it's I think the BBC do their do their best at it but 24 hour rolling news is difficult as hell mm. a lot of um, people say that that started after 9-11 it probably did yeah yeah I can I can I can see that I can see that mm. uh I can see that being being the yeah. case because any news channel worth their salt is not a 12 hour news channel anymore you know as in like it's not only just I mean even the term news channel probably wasn't a thing <laughs> yeah, yeah. 20 years ago entire channel yeah. dedicated uh, to now you have you know Fo- Fox News is a channel it's not like you watch Fox 5 in America or some and, part and of it Fox comes on at the end of it yeah. and then you get oh this is Fox News obviously because it's the Fox channel which is why they all bear those names but you have BBC News if you go down the dial on Sky TV actually you get some really obscure news well, stuff like after Russia Today and Al Jazeera yeah, and, yeah. exactly yeah I mean, I watch Russia Today and Al Jazeera and the BBC, and I watch a little bit of Fox News just you know for for entertainment. For yeah, the most part. I, uh, yeah. But the worst one you said that actually kind of jumping on uh, not the bandwagon, but just doing it for to bring home the bacon, you know, for the newspaper. the The biggest one in the UK is ironically the most right wing one. Uh, so you would imagine would be most socially conservative. If you go on the on the da- on the uh, on the mails, uh, it's, yeah, it is the mails. Um, the one that Hitchens writes for. Yeah, the mail. Yeah, the mail. Yeah. You go on their website, uh, on the Daily Mail's website, they have all the juicy celebrity stuff on there. Yeah, that's weird. It's so weird. I constantly find it and go, aren't you guys right wing? Why are you talking about like Rihanna, Rihanna's fat 
thighs. Yeah, I, you know. I, yeah. Surely you find why? Surely this is the stuff that Peter Hitchens complains about, like you know, uh, just anathematized, kind of you know, <laughs> sedated, sedentary society talking about things that don't matter. But your whole website is like, I could find less gossip columns on the Sun's website. Yeah, I know. and they're weird because that, they're in conjunction well. with these. Sure, I'm conservative. Um, I don't think all conservatism is a problem. I, I like fiscal conservatism. If someone says they don't like loads and loads of debt, well, that's fine. Cool. I'm, I'm all for that. But if you have a, a, a comparatively, at least an attempt to be as cerebral as possible, article on the economy on the one hand, and right next to it in the drop-down column on the right-hand side is like some article about end dubs and you're like, wait, that's, what? Yeah, I, but I can't, I, can't, yeah. I can't see who necessarily that is appealing to. Either maybe it's a, an attempt to reach out at different demographics, mm. uh, yeah, demographics. or the middle-aged men that read the the, the record uh, are sorry the the Daily Mail, yeah, are you know kind of just pervy old men that like to read maybe. about that like to read about the immigrants and then you know wank off over the immigrants in the next in the next page. You yeah, you've got it tabbed. Just, you know, yeah. the blacks are invading again. It's 1960 all over again. Next page, boof. You know. Uh, whoever enter, you know, black celebrity harass you know, immigrants. Get the loop out. The next half an hour is all on you, big boy. You know, yeah. that's, that's, you just, that's just harass immigrants and hate the poor. That's the yeah. uh, the Daily Mail uh, yeah. way of looking at things. But um, but yeah, so it's it's, it's kind of crazy in, in the twenty four hour news uh, culture, which is why I think another kind of feather in the cap of, of Channel Four news is that they don't. Uh, and ITV as well, but I think ITV is definitely kind of the the fourth, you know, horse in the race in terms. Yeah, of, they're the fourth of wheel. They're 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 uh, yeah. they're good in their own their yeah. their own respect, of course. Yeah, it's, I, it's it's a couple. Their friend, their friend, the third wheel, and the, their friend stalker <laughs> is ITV. Okay. You know, but the uh, but the, the the props that I have to give to ITV and to Channel Four is that they they um, probably because of budget issues. I suppose if ITV had the budget, they probably would have a twenty four hour news uh, station. But they have you know they have their their set news shows, and I think that's still a good thing. No matter if if by the time it's on, oh that news is five hours old already, which is yeah. a ridiculous thing to think about. But it's still good because it yeah. means that they have an entire day to craft out what that story is as opposed to somebody uh, tweeting something mm. and then two minutes later oh correction and then the story that was a huge deal ten minutes ago is entirely different and a lot exactly. more you know a lot more realistic five minutes mm. later you know do you do you as someone who studies this kind of stuff and uh, it's obviously a massive passion of yours and you write yourself mm. uh, do you get irritated like when you see when you are aware of some news that's out there that's just come out and you're like this is really important stuff and it's very interesting and you go to the websites and they're all running the same two stories at the top like their top two stories are more or less the same with a few exceptions and you're like neither of these matter why aren't you talking about this thing which is far more important oh yeah uh, I remember I was watching uh, BBC News 24 uh, it was on it was on in my work when um it was the day that Margot McDonald died. Yeah. Um, and the story that they kept going back to and kept going back to and kept going back to on BBC News 24 was Bruce Forsyth quit Strictly Come Dancing. I remember that. Yeah, that's crazy. It's and <sighs> fair enough, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe Reporting Scotland had had a far more in-depth piece. In fact, I'm sure that Reporting Scotland did. Um, but it just seemed it just seemed absolutely horrendous to me that. Uh, that what I think as well is just a really good story as well of Margaret MacDonald, um, you know, having her, having her fight against uh, against Parkinson's and sticking up for people's, you know, the 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 right to to die and things like that, and then, uh, and then that just gets sidelined in favor of, in favor of Bruce Forsyth uh, on his Saturday night television show. So it it was it was a really pain in the ass thing. So that'd be my uh, most prevalent example of. Uh, of that in any case okay folks well we're probably going to wrap it up there thank you very much for watching whatever you're doing I hope you're at home busy adding to your human capital um, various worthwhile enterprises on the go happening simultaneously thanks a lot for being on the show man I really uh, have had a great time with you being on I mean we talked a lot about a lot of fucking guff but oh, yeah. you know <laughs> uh, that is the way that filler is supposed to be certainly filler yeah uh, yeah and we'll have you on uh, hopefully another time this summer 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. We've had some technical issues today, folks. I hope you will forgive me. I've probably adjusted my mic one too many times. I'm still trying to. It's almost like a, a concert of instruments, you know. You could learn the violin, you could learn the cello or the double bass or some shit. When you do the the thing with the mics and the and the stands and the pop covers, and the laptop and all that kind of thing, and try and right. make it synergetic and work together, it's more like an orchestra. I see. And kind of, I just waiting for these guys, uh, this equipment that I have to kind of work as a team, uh, which I will probably get progressively better at. But you're juggling more page. balls, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, it's, it's been great. It's been great since the, uh, the, the first, especially this was my uh, first time being on, on, on Shadow Podcast. It was great doing the the Impulse Magazine stuff. It's been great doing this. Uh, we'll be working together on some uh, upcoming projects that we that we can't uh, quite talk about at this point. Can't but but uh, but it'll be great. Uh, hopefully, you'll you'll uh, all learn more about that as it comes up. But no, thanks thanks very much for having me again. No man, it's been a pleasure. Um, and in terms of, yeah, as I said before, I think I said before, uh, I'll definitely try and have you on again this summer. Definitely. Under better uh, technical circumstances, although sure. in a back and forth kind of conversational sense, this has been great. I've really enjoyed it. And my laptop is telling me that it is dying. So we should probably <laughs> go at this point. Take very good care of yourselves, folks. You've been listening to Shadow Show Podcast. And if you want to find my review, as we mentioned earlier, of Captain America, the first Avenger, you can find it on the same channel that you're watching right now. I'll see you later. Bye.